thank you, Valdis. Um, well, the, the decision uh, that we took last March to activate the, the general escape clause was indeed a, a recognition um, of the gravity of the uh, unfolding crisis hitting uh, Europe. It was also a statement of our determination to take all necessary steps to tackle the pandemic and support jobs and companies. And I think that this strong reaction was indeed very uh, effective. The preliminary guidance that we are providing today means that we need to keep the clause activated also in 2022. Because one year on, we remain in the midst of the very difficult phase. The pandemic continues to take the lives of hundreds of Europeans every single day. Of course, the rollout of vaccination, which we are doing everything in our power to accelerate, has shown that there is this famous light at the end of the tunnel. And we have uh, a few indicators showing some optimism. For example, the uh, European sentiment indicator um, provided by DG ECFIN or the uh, PMI market for manufacture, uh, they are both showing a return of optimism. But at the same time, the battle against COVID is not yet won and it continues to also take a grim toll in our economy and society. And other indicators are showing that we are not yet out of this situation. For example, the Oxford Stringency Index and the Mobility Index shows uh, still a situation very similar to the one of the last quarter of last year. So we will take our final decision for 2022 uh, in May jointly with the Council and based on our spring economic forecast. But we felt it was important to provide this preliminary guidance now to give some predictability for member states before they submit their stability and convergence programs, their medium-term fiscal plans to the Commission next month. Today's communication also reflects the consensus on some key policy issues that has emerged in our discussions with member states. For instance, that we should gradually move from emergency measures to those that support the recovery and resilience when the health situation allows. And that fiscal policy should remain agile, so to say, and effectively adjust at the situ as the situation evolves, because the, the situation is rather um, difficult to predict and still with a lot of uncertainty. But we are also setting the terms today of the debate for the period ahead, in particular how to conduct fiscal policy in 2022 and over the medium term. There is a growing consensus both in the EU and internationally for example, this consensus was crystal clear in the G20 meeting last Friday that we need to maintain a balanced policy mix and that a premature withdrawal of fiscal support should be avoided. That in the current circumstances, the risks of doing little outweigh those of doing much. This is a time to act big, to quote the new US Treasury secretary sentence. So today the Commission states clearly that pulling back support too quickly would be a policy mistake. The best way to secure public debt sustainability, the best way to reduce the risk of scaring and economic divergence is now to support the recovery. Our communication also underlines that budgetary policies will continue to be conducted under pervasive uncertainty. Exactly when to start the pivot in the type of measures and when to start giving less weight to stimulus and more to fiscal prudence can't be answered today. The time will come, of course. 
We know it's certainly not the case this year. We also know that in uh, 2022, the overall fiscal stance should remain supportive. Those with high debt <coughs> can achieve that thanks also to the considerable transfer they will receive from the RRF. How to calibrate fiscal policy in each member state should depend on the state of its economy, which in turn depends on the state of the pandemic. So our fiscal policy recommendations in the spring will reflect this. When it comes to excessive deficit procedures, we will await the outturn data for 2020, which will be av available in May. Uh, but you will see that our communication makes clear our thinking on this by recalling the conclusion that we reached in May last year to not open EDP, considering the high uncertainty still prevailing. And I think that this uncertainty is still valid this year, that we will take final decision in May. Those recommendations will also aim to give meaningful medium-term guidance, notably with regard to factoring in the impact of the RRF. Member states' investments, both the nationally financed and the additional investment financed by RRF, need to be respectively preserved and promoted. Other expenditure increases should be financed by permanent revenue sources. Lastly, we are confirming today the importance of the economic governance review first launched last February, then put on hold due to the pandemic. We are making clear that the key issues identified back then remain relevant. In fact, the COVID crisis and the need to build back better have only reinforced the case for reviewing our fiscal rule book to reflect these challenges. We will therefore restart the review when the recovery takes hold and gains momentum, which, as you know, we expect to happen in the second half of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much.